Hello there friends and welcome for today's Dragon's Dogma 2 guide we have all about the Trickster vocation. I know a lot of people aren't really a fan of Trickster because it is actually the only true full support focused class in the whole game, that is, you don't have any offensive potential at all at least as far as the main character. On the other hand it can still be a fun class to play because you excel at first, manipulating the enemy's artificial intelligence and aggro so that they'll never attack your party, which is of course amazing for defenses, followed by the ultimate damage buff possible in the game to ensure your opponents will easily destroy any enemy or boss in seconds. Later in this guide I'll also give you ways of combining Trickster with Warfarer so that you'll get even more support or of course damage potential. So without further ado let us get into our Trickster guide. First, with how the core mechanics behind the class work. Your main ability as a trickster is your Simulacrum. Ideally, you want to cast it out of battle, because it does have a casting time and can be interrupted. By pressing and holding RB, you can have your Summon Simulacrum latch to your character's back, as to easily follow you around the map, going from battle to battle, so you won't have to constantly recast it unless it dies. Second, if you just press RB once, the Simulacrum will instead quickly teleport to wherever you are, which is also great to force enemies to fumble and miss their attacks, for example a Dragon's Breath. Lastly, through the Mending Vapor core trickster skill, your Simulacrum will quickly restore and regenerate health whenever latched to your back, and it is quite fast by the way. Much better you do this than have the Simulacrum die as you not have to cast it during battle. Now let us cover the best trickster skills. And let's start with one of the best ones, Suffocating and Sweeping Shroud. These are pretty much your bread and butter trickster skills and you'll be spamming them a lot, usually once or even more per battle. When you cast it, you unleash a huge fog cloud and this is what will make enemies target your simulacrum instead of party members or yourself. The effect is indeed very strong because enemies will just stop what they're doing and always, always go for the simulacrum instead. It's almost as if having invincibility for your party for the duration, which is pretty big. The same for the area of effect, you can easily hit the entire enemy pack with this. You can always check if the enemy has been hit because their hit points bar will start flashing. Remember, you can always move your simulacrum around by having it teleport to your character, which means you can easily manipulate the enemy's artificial intelligence to keep missing their attacks, especially the ones with slower attacks like let's say a dragon's fire breath, because it doesn't have that high hit points, and when you have loads of enemies focusing on it, chances are it will expire fast, and you'll of course have to summon it again, otherwise the enemies will resume targeting your party. Second we have Aromatic, Resurgence and Rally. This is actually one of the ultimate damage buffs in the whole game, probably the strongest of them all even. It only affects your pawns and hits an absolutely massive area, so that you can easily buff pawns even if they are far away. And essentially it will increase their damage by a massive amount, something like 50% extra damage even. There's two downsides to this buff however, first, your pawns hit points will be slowly drained during the duration, it's not much of an issue however because it's not true hit points loss, which means you can easily recover it all by just casting healing spells or using consumables, like a mage for example. Second, because your pawns will go berserk but they'll only attack the enemies, you won't be able to give them directions like the go and help me commands. But honestly, because of how absolutely busted the damage increase is, this is definitely a must have pick for any trickster. Even if you are just playing as a Warfarer and don't care about the other Trickster skills, Aromatic Resurgence is so good that it's worth being one of your 3 or 4 skill slots. After all, it's not like you'll have any offensive capabilities on your Trickster themselves. So having your pawns easily delete enemies and bosses is the way to go. Third we have our Maester Ultimate skill, Dragon's Delusion. It's a very cool looking skill as you'll summon the illusion of a dragon which will roar at the enemies. Sadly, the effect I find a bit gimmicky like the other 
trickster skills, because essentially the dragon will make the smaller enemies flee. And well, I'm not sure about you, but I personally hate having to chase after them, as it just means more time wasted. The skill says it also causes the enemies to trip, but it's mostly them running away from you. And of course, it's not that good against bosses and does have a very high stamina cost. Honestly, because of how easy it is to simply manipulate the enemy's aggro with your Suffocating Shroud ability that doesn't have any of these downsides, I would just much rather use it instead. Now, sadly, the other trickster skills are either gimmicky or just not that good, besides the illusory screen and also elusive divider, which can create two illusory walls. It can be fun for blocking the enemies, but once again, you can just prevent them from attacking your party through Suffocating Shroud. Plus, I'm pretty sure in some cases the enemies just ignore the wall and go straight for your Simulacrum. The remaining skills are definitely just gimmicky. I mean, they have flavor, sure. For example, Visitant Aura and the Espial Incense let you essentially scout the map with your Simulacrum that enemies can't attack. It's just that Dragon's Dogma isn't exactly the type of game where you need to do this because you can just kill the enemies, even from range. Meanwhile, Tricky Terrace will let you create the illusion of a floor, so if you cast it over, let's say, a cliff, the enemies can walk on it and, well, fall to their deaths. Problem is, depending on where they fall, you'll lose the loot, which I don't find that worthwhile. You also have the Fragment Alarum ability to essentially detect hostile enemies, including behind walls. But once again, what's the point? <laughs> it's pretty easy to detect the enemies, even without this. So it's mostly a gimmick, culminating in Blinding Effigy and also Latching Effigy, which essentially latches your Simulacrum on one enemy, as to cause the other enemies to attack the target instead. So honestly, the way to go as far as the best for skill set for a trickster character are Suffocating Shroud, of course, to manipulate the enemies, followed by Aromatic Resurgence for the ultimate party wide damage buff. And honestly, you don't really need any of the other skills, which is great for combining with the Warfarer class. But of course, you can also go with, let's say, Dragon's Delusion and something like Elusive Divider. This also means the classic, let's say, gameplay loop of Trickster is very simple, as ideally you just want to conjure your Simulacrum out of battle, then have it follow you around the map, and as soon as you reach the enemies, you release the Simulacrum, cast Suffocating Shroud, so they'll focus on it instead of your party, then go for the Aromatic Resurgence buff to increase your allies' damage. And that is honestly pretty much it, outside of running around and constantly teleporting the simulacrum over the map so the enemies have a hard time hitting it as to prolong its usefulness and duration. Now what about the best augments for a trickster? Honestly, the unique ones are also rather poor because they are mostly gimmicky, just like most of your abilities, I'm afraid. Besides detection, which can be useful as it lets you detect two of the most important items in the game, Seeker's Tokens, or Wakestone Shards. You'll get a very noticeable sound when around them. It's just that as far as the blinking light, it is very, very small and rather localized on the item itself, so it doesn't help that much. The other unique trickster augments are very disappointing. Besides enlightenment, which can result in more and combining materials, but stuff like Fugacity, which reduces the chances of being attacked by enemies when resting in a campsite or riding an ox cart, or Obfuscation, which reduces the chances of enemies targeting you when not in battle stands, even Allure, which lets you raise affinity with people more easily, they're kinda useless, I'm afraid. What this means is you absolutely want cross-class augments instead, especially two from Magic Archer. Thankfully, they can be acquired rather fast, starting with Sustainment, to increase the physical defense and magic defense of your pawns, followed by Ascendancy, which is the same, but offensive instead, for higher strength and magic. Considering pawns will be your main source of damage as a pure trickster, you absolutely want to get these. Don't forget Detection for its utility, 
and the rest is up to you, but I wouldn't bother with the offensive ones, like for example, ambuscade to increase the damage when targets are not in battle stance, because it's not like you'll be dealing damage as a pure trickster. Now, as I mentioned before, because the trickster class is really lacking in offensive power, when you consider the fact you truly only have two very good skills, you can easily combine it with the Warfare class for more damage potential and even higher support power. Unfortunately, there is one downside of combining Warfarer with Trickster, and it's the fact that once you switch weapons going from your Incense to something else, like let's say a Fighter's Sword, your Simulacrum will expire very fast. On the other hand, because it's not like you need Suffocating Shroud, as you can easily kill enemies fast in this game. Aromatic Resurgence will still work with any Trickster combination. And as far as the last skill for damage, go with whatever you prefer. For example, Sagittate Avalanche from Magic Archer, so you'll keep your range potential, plus the Magic Bow weapon is very good, as even its normal attack can easily melt enemies, so that you won't need your Simulacrum that much or something like the classic Thief's Skull Splitter, if you prefer. Now, if you really want the ultimate support possible as a Trickster, then you'll want the Celerity buff from Mage, especially High Celerity. This way you'll have Aromatic Resurgence for amazing damage increase, followed by a Haste effect, which of course also translates into more damage as your opponents will attack faster. Plus, by just equipping a Mage Staff as a Warfare Trickster, you can have all of your pawns be full DPS offense focused. As the main downside of Aromatic Resurgence, the hit points loss, well, you can easily recover it out of battle by casting the Mage Heal spell. The same is also true for the Celerity buff, as you can prep buff with it, so that you don't have to switch between weapons as to not destroy your Simulacrum. Now what about the best party for a trickster as it's all about your opponents? Well, if you aren't a warfarer, then you absolutely want one mage to recover the constant HP loss from your aromatic buffs, while the high celerity spell can increase power damage even further. Also, just one offensive skill like high leveling, for example, as you'll be doing great damage regardless, even as a mage pawn. Besides that, it's all about DPS pawns, so either go with a party of full thieves, they can also steal stuff, which is great, plus of course Skull Splitter can obliterate enemies, or sorcerers. It's just that thieves I find better for normal encounters, because sorcerer spells take a long time to cast and are kind of overkill for normal enemies. On the other hand, they are definitely faster when it comes to killing bosses, as your sorcerers will never be hit and interrupted anyways when playing your trickster properly and baiting the enemies with your Simulacrum. So if you're already a Warfarer, go with either Triple Thieves or Triple Sorcerers. Now as far as weapons, I just wanna note that you can actually attack with your Trickster Sensor, it's just that the damage will be very poor. On the other hand, by doing all of the Sphinx quests, you'll get a special sensor that can provide you with gold whenever hitting the enemies. Lastly, your Strength stat is what counts for better illusions, while magic will increase the health of your simulacrum, so they do have uses even for a trickster without any offensive attacks. Lastly, unlocking trickster is pretty simple, just talk to the NPC at the Reverend Shrine in the desert area. And as far as your ultimate skill, it's the same NPC, but she'll be at the rooftop of the shrine instead, which means you can get both at the same time. Well, alright friends, so this was it for our trickster guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I highly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.